This is the uh, glass bead game uh, video seven, uh, continuing on. Uh, we finally got through all the names of all the uh, great minds and thinkers um, that I use in my glass bead game um, to uh, synthesize all that together uh, to create this uh, uh, reality and study of life and reality uh, that I'm going through. Um, this video, what I did, I was trying to come up with uh, some names of places and ideas that uh, were similar throughout history uh, that attempted to create perfect societies and perfect uh, uh, realities and so forth. Uh, so I thought I would just go through some of those. Um, Castalia was the uh, location where Joseph Necht in the glass bead game, that's where he studied. Um, again, he studied primarily mathematics and uh, music initially. And then uh, the uh, glass bead game was synthesizing all of the uh, profound concepts of the various disciplines um, into one fused uh, view of uh, life and higher consciousness and so forth. So in the end, the glass bead game uh, turned out to be his life. Uh, recently, I went and actually got a tattoo of the glass bead game right here on my chest, which I'll show you in a second. And uh, what it is, uh, is uh, glass beads uh, rolling on a mirror uh, from a ray of light, and there's a very small bead in the background uh, reflecting on the mirror, and then in the forefront there's two larger mirrors. Uh, it won't show very good in this video, but I will show show it to you to verify how serious I am about the glass bead game. Um, so right here uh, you have the uh, rays of light, and it doesn't show very well, uh, but there are beads, glass beads, uh, rolling on a mirror, almost as if coming out of creation uh, from that uh, ray of light. So uh, that's how seriously I take the uh, glass bead game. So going on, um, Plato talked about uh, his academy and participated in his academy back um, 300 uh, BC, uh, where great minds of the time would contemplate existence, and um, this was actually the start of our university system as it exists today, uh, where Socrates and Plato and many of the great minds of those times uh, would um, uh, get involved in deep philosophical uh, thought. Uh, some other ones, um, uh, in my dinner with Andre, he talks about sac sanctuaries where there would be pockets of light where uh, uh, people could go outside of the uh, evil of society and mundaneness of society, uh, that there would be these sanctuaries uh, where people could go and experience these higher levels of consciousness and reality and peace and nirvana and all of those types of things. Uh, Plato also talked about this uh, imaginary place called Atlantis and there were people actually looking for Atlantis and, and so forth of this uh, perfect society. In my glass bead game, um, I don't, I'm not preaching to society and trying to say that this should be a perfect society for the world. This is a perfect society just for myself and uh, for other people that uh, share these types of views. Uh, Ayn Rand's Objectivist Society, which is an ongoing society, uh, at one point I was going to try to contribute uh, to their society. Uh, but then was too busy at work and, and didn't pursue it any further. Uh, but her uh, views of self-interest, self-achievement, um, 
uh, really interests me and I was going to attempt to become a, a member of this and just never followed through on it. Um, other sanctuaries uh, that I think exist today are philosophy departments within our university system, um, especially, uh, well, all philosophy of mind and metaphysics. Uh, I think those are actual sanctuaries where this higher learning is taking place in, in today's society. And uh, uh, I, I have my um, pursuits that I have on my own, but I'm actually considering uh, going back and uh, uh, getting a uh, master's and PhD in philosophy. I may pursue this outside of what I uh, do. I do this. I work during the day. I'm a CFO of a corporation and uh, on my free time I have all these intellectual pursuits, but I'm thinking I may even um, uh, pursue it in this way as well. I've written a book. I have a website. Um, I'm working on a second book, uh, but I may do this as well, uh, just for the heck of it, really, that it may uh, surround me with, with more people that uh, have these types of thoughts. Um, the Assailant Institute, I don't know a lot about it, although um, Alan Watts talked about it out in California. Um, Gary Zukov, I believe, talked about it. It is still in existence today where, in effect, they participate in this type of glass bead game, higher level of thought and Eastern mysticism. I really don't know a lot about it, but it is an actual society where you can go and work and live, I guess. Uh, I looked it up online. It looked pretty interesting. Um, the Vatican. Uh, I did visit the Vatican in Rome a couple of years ago. It really is a place of um, deep m metaphysical thought and peace. Uh, it is a fort uh, that's guarded 24-7 throughout the years. There were many wars uh, fought and uh, it is a fort, a large fort that is protected 24-7 shuts down at 10 o'clock at night, but that is a place where uh, higher learning uh, does exist. Um, so I really enjoyed the Vatican. I don't share a lot of their views. I think it's too dogmatic for my likes, but uh, it was one of the most beautiful places on earth. I put on here the Library of Congress. Um, that is a place that has all of these great minds. It has a lot of other stuff as well, but the Library of Congress actually is a place that has, uh, any library almost really, has the uh, information available um, to anyone uh, to pursue uh, anything that you need to know. And when you couple this with the internet and Google and how anything we need to know, want to study, want to get involved with is at our fingertips is really an amazing age to live in. Uh, some other societies, the Mayans, I don't really know a lot about them other than they had a calendar that's going to run out this year and um, apparently had somewhat of a perfect society. Also, I don't know if this was the Aztecs or what, but Cortez the Killer, uh, Neil Young talked about this, how all the women were beautiful and they lived in some kind of perfect existence. Uh, so I just uh, really like that song. Uh, Sikh temples. There was a great um, tragedy in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. And um, the more I've learned about the Sikhs is they are very peaceful people. Uh, they're ceremonies. Uh, they sit in deep meditation uh, on uh, existence and, and the self and God and I really appreciate the, uh, the Sikh way of thinking. Other sanctuaries of this uh, music, Carnegie Hall, just think about in the history of all the great uh, musical events and uh, 
classical music and beautiful music that must have flowed through the perfect uh, uh, the perfect setting for all of the um, the acoustics and everything so all the beauty that's flowed through uh, Carnegie Hall um, Greenwich Village I put on here I think there's a lot of craziness and wackiness in there but when you talk about the arts and Broadway and um, pursuing these bigger and higher states of consciousness and I think a lot of that is drug induced and whatever but Greenwich Village kind of intrigues me that they attempt to have this uh, unique society um, Gracie Miami um, my son trained at Gracie Miami Jiu Jitsu uh, I thought that was interesting it's not only uh, Jiu Jitsu and uh, and the art of that but also a mind body and soul aspect to all of that I kind of thought was interesting other ones in history that were kind of interesting uh, the Egyptians the Pharaohs uh, were mummified and buried in the uh, the pyramids uh, for uh, the attempt at immortality so I just thought that was kind of unique uh, the Aryans, uh, the Aryan race attempted to uh, have a perfect man. Now that was completely corrupted and uh, you know, they tried to take over the world and, and dominate the world and were an absolute brutal evil society. Uh, but some of those thoughts as far as trying to create a perfect man was kind of interesting. Uh, the Fabians also believe in um, and this is a society still today uh, started in England I believe and I think it may still be a worldwide organization this is kind of the foundation of the liberal coerced altruism that uh, exists today and uh, this attempt at a, a perfect society um, Orson Welles was a Fabian um, some others, um, George Bernard Shaw, those, those were Teddy Roosevelt, those were some of the early uh, Fabians that started this whole socialist, liberal indoctrination movement that many consider to be evil, actually, um, especially Ayn Rand and Glenn Beck. Uh, the Pythagoreans, who we've talked about a little bit, um, Pythagoras was in Herman Hesse's The Journey to the East novel. Also, uh, the Pythagoreans, they had a society that they believed everything was explainable through mathematics, that it was perfect, and people that came up with proofs that there, things weren't perfect, like I think pi and some other things, uh, those people were actually killed or to keep that uh, quiet as we've seen so much in throughout history the Vatican had people killed they had uh, they Galileo was killed and the Inquisition and others conforming so um, the, the Arians believed a certain way Fabians believed a certain way um, so throughout history and still today and more so maybe even today uh, with the elaborate system of uh, controlling uh, people's thoughts. Uh, Nietzsche talked about this, uh, lying to the public of the, the great lies. <laughs> and we went through those in other videos of this elaborate system of controlling the masses and the thought. And it's just an amazing elaborate web that still exists. So the glass speed game certainly breaks out of all of that type of negativity and programming and and uh, group thinking, whatever. Uh, the Masons are similar to the Pythagoreans, still exist today. The Freemasons uh, believe that everything is a logical, uh, mathematical uh, perfection. Uh, Plato believed that this perfection. Uh, was outside of our perceived reality that there were the platonic forms 
others believe that this perfection is within our reality. Uh, Tibetan temples are kind of intriguing. Um, just a deep thought into existence and and this gets into Buddhism of just this intense, deep thought into existence and uh, shedding the ego, oddly enough. And uh, Ayn Rand believed this was just evil, uh, shedding the evil. She glorified the e ego. Uh, the Buddhism and Zen and Tao, uh, the shedding of the self uh, on this path towards nirvana. So there's just this extremely uh, different way of looking at the world. Um, and uh, I, I enjoy them both, uh, and possibly of trying to synthesize them of both ways of thinking in the glass bead game. And then uh, finally, I you know live my. Uh, I have a day job where I pay the bills and uh, and have an awesome job by day, uh, making money and and doing things and the excitement of business. Uh, but uh, in my free time, I have a website, Metaphysics of Being, um, where my book is on there, free online, and many all of these videos that I've made, many videos from others of other people. So all the members of what I consider uh, my glass bead game are all, all collected in this website of Metaphysics of Being.